All right. Um, I'll start off by saying that uh, for all of us as, as players and coaches to be able to go out there, that environment that we just hit in that first preseason game with those fans, we just want to say thank you, man. That, that, that was awesome. The vibe that we had, the fans getting going, um, uh, even the, the mockery there at the, the end of the second quarter when we were struggling and didn't get any uh, first downs, you could the, the applause when we got our first first down, you know, uh, is we understand that, we get it. But uh, we just want to thank them. I thought it was awesome. It was pretty cool. And you don't always get that in these preseason games. So we're, we need that and we want that. So I'll start with that. Um, big picture, uh, tons of situational things today that we as coaches love because we can teach off of that. Tons of it, special teams, defense, offense. Uh, it really started there at the end of the second quarter with Justin being able to take them down and steal three points. And it goes on and on and on. Um, we won the turnover battle. We want to stay. We protected the football on offense. We got two takeaways on defense. So we, we want to be able to be tops in the league in that, in that category. Offensive line, zero sacks. Uh, got the run game going a little bit. I think that's been an emphasis from everybody here, of just trying to wonder what's going to happen there. And I thought they did a great job. Um, it still doesn't mean anything, you know. But at the same point in time, it allows us to know that um, they, did a, they did a great job of not letting those quarterbacks get hit and getting the run game going. I thought, uh, um, you know, the penalties, we had a lot of penalties in that first half. And it was, you know, the, the discipline stuff where we want to be able to just be smart and giving first downs or offensively moving backwards. That, that we can't have. Again, we want to make sure these guys learn, learn from that. And then uh, that's really probably it. I know you guys got a lot of questions. But the, the biggest thing for, for us as coaches and for the guys in there as players is the, there's opportunities for competition. It allows us to go through a game situation and do the things that sometimes you forget to do when you don't have preseason. So the logistics of all that I thought went well. And in the end, ultimately, you love winning. And uh, I'm proud of our guys. And now we get right back at it in a couple of days. Matt, when things were shaky for Justin right at the beginning, what did you tell him? And then what did you like how he responded in that two-minute drill right before halftime? Sure, yeah. It, it was, um, you know, you know, there's the excitement. And everybody uh, is juiced up, ready to go. and. We had a couple runs just to, to get settled in and, and get the guys going, not just Justin, but everybody. You know, we were moving some guys in and out. And uh, um, I think that just goes to show that, hey, nothing's always perfect. And we, we came back, and uh, then we had the, the one low snap, and we were kind of going backwards, and we had some incompletions, and it just was choppy. But that's kind of a part of it. And I thought it was great to see uh, the resiliency of the offense in general of being able to go down there and guys we're, we haven't we, you, you mentally practice the end of the half stuff so far we haven't really done it live so for to have some of that stuff go on it's great teaching and then in the end to, to get those three and make a long field goal that probably propelled us a little bit mentally going into halftime the offensive line was doing well and uh, it's good for him so to answer your question long winded story he did great job of bouncing back which is what he's always done Last two completions of that drive, the 15 yard to Hardy and then the quick one to Jesse. The block obviously a factor. What, were your, what was your take on those two to get you in? It, it was smart. You know, we were holding on to the timeouts. Um, they were, the clock was getting down, and then you get down there, and I think we had seven or eight seconds left. So that's stuff we, we talk about, we teach, we show tape of it, but we, don't, we didn't really practice it a whole lot. So that's now we get to take it and go um, in a couple of days and watch it. But it just goes to show, like, very, very calm. I thought Justin, I know, uh, you know, all these guys did a good job, but, but I thought because he played the most snaps, the one thing that you felt from Justin probably that we all took away down there, that he was extremely calm the whole time. So, man, just overall, how do you process what he did out there? Knowing, again, it, it's the preseason. Yeah, that's – yep. yeah, for sure. And if you go back to um, the start of training camp, and as, as when we uh, drafted Justin and we had Andy in here and we have Nick – uh, you know, I've, I've continued to say that all we want to do is we want to make this um, that we want them to be the best quarterbacks they can be. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about next week. Don't worry about the future. Just worry about today. And I thought that Justin did a great job of worrying about today. And he played smart football. Um, he made plays. Uh, and again, like what you just said, you know, it is preseason and it, it's we all understand um, that there's variables involved in all that. Uh, but at the same point in time, if, if you said, hey, you go back and you look, is he doing what you want him to do? Absolutely. And, um, you know, it, it's good because Andy and Nick there on the sideline helping him, Flip helping him on the sideline. And he was just very reserved. And, and then also that, that scramble for a touchdown, you know, there, you, you feel the vibe, you feel the energy. And it was, it was pretty cool. Man, what, what 
conclusions could, could you draw from the first team offense with Andy? Just a couple of drives. I, I guess that's what you wanted, but what did you think about? Yeah, it, it was hard because we didn't have. It was only a few drives, and you know it was three and outs. Um, I'll go back and, and watch the tape and see you know some of the whys, but um, it, it's just. Again, I think it's it's kind of a, a deal where these guys that aren't going to play very much. Like David's trying, he's trying to tell, hey, give me the ball, give me the ball. I want, he wants like 15 carries preseason one, and and I, I you know I told him he wasn't going to be getting many, so he got his two and got out. And um, so it's kind, it's hard to answer that question because you're not you don't get in a rhythm. It's uh, it's just difficult. It's more so to tell you the truth with these ones. It's more so to just let them go through pregame. Let them get out there, get the feeling of what it's like to just run a few plays and then get out. And so it's it's hard to evaluate that. For a guy like Andy, it's kind of perfunctory. He's been through this so many times. Yeah. But for the offense as a whole, it seems like they need the work. So how do you balance that? No, they do. Yeah, they do. And we we uh, we have some um, timing that we're continuing to work on. But again, like you know. A Rob's not out there, right? You got, you know, Marquise Goodwin's not out there. You got, you know, a couple guys on the offensive line that aren't out there. David comes out after two plays. So it's not, I guess, as we get going here a little bit more, we'll see more uh, of that to be able to evaluate that. But um, I think more so than anything, like I said a few days ago, we know what Andy can do um, when things are completely normal in a real game. We know what he can do at quarterback. We got to get to the point to see what Justin can do, and the only way we can do that is by getting him reps in these preseason to evaluate. You know, uh, you, under, you understand the excitement. Yep. Here, Mark Pitano, Justin. Yep. What do you say to them in terms of Justin's, you know, being the second string quarterback? Mm -hmm. and, and also, and how do you just process balancing that with what your plan is? Yeah. No. It's. Uh, I think it's very real. I think that for all of us, because. You know, we're all, everybody here is super excited about the way that he played today, you know, and we all want the same thing. And um, we, we understand the buzz. We understand the excitement. That, that's, that's, that's why we drafted him. You know what I mean? That's why we drafted him. But there is, we want to make sure that we continue to go through this thing, that we understand the process. And this is one game that, he's, that he came in here. And now the beautiful thing is we get to get more practices in and get to see how he comes back next week you know, against Buffalo, and he's going to have another chance. And then, as we said, you know, uh, all these guys, Andy included, and, you know, they're all going to be want to come out here and just do the best they can do at their position. And, and um, when we watch the tape tomorrow, there's going to be guys that shine and guys that can get better. But I totally, totally understand all the, the buzz, all the excitement, and, um, you know, we feel it too. What does he have to do to push you to the point of saying, there, there really is a decision to make here between the two quarterbacks. Yeah, he, he uh, keeps stacking days like he had today, right? And understanding that, um, again, in this whole process, in this plan as we go, we, we, what's the ultimate goal for us as an offense? Score touchdowns, right? So keep scoring, keep leading the team down, keep getting first downs, keep getting touchdowns. Let us be able to see the whys behind everything, right? Why did that happen? And the more times that you have things happen because of that player, meaning Justin, or that player because of Andy, or that player because of Montgomery, or whoever, we know that, we see that, and then it, it makes it hard on us. And then we're going to do whatever is best. In the end, ultimately, we're always going to do what's best for the Chicago Bears, right? And so um, here we are in week one, and I just think we all um, understand that it, it was a, a great first day for Justin at that position. He did awesome. We love that. And now let's put it together and let's keep working, let's improve it, and let's stay consistent with it, right? Let's take this into the next game when you're back out there. And we also understand, like, you know, these other guys that didn't play very much, they want to get, they want to play a little bit more next week too and do their thing. And we're looking for the identity of this offense and how we get to the to be the best we can be. Jason, Peterson, Jason Peters' agent announced that mm -hmm. he's signing with you guys. Yeah. Where does that put you at with the left tackle <laughs> position, and does that indicate that Tevin's not going to be around it, anytime soon? It, it really doesn't have anything to do with Tevin, but what it does is it's more about uh, familiarity with a guy that's played in this league for a long time. He's been very good. We understand that he's older. We, we get that. We know that. There's a history with Juan. Juan worked with him several years ago in Philadelphia. I know him when I was there. I think in general what, what it does is it, it, it he knows that – um, for us to bring him in, that there's a great competition for him to come in and just we're trying to do everything we can to provide protection and great run game and whatever we need to do. I think that's the beauty of Ryan and his guys. They're looking everywhere at every spot. So it just if that's going to provide more competition and somebody that played last year and, and did well when you watch the tape, 
Um, we like that, and I think that that's uh, important to always check off. Did you talk? Did you talk to him? I mean, is he going to sign here to be a backup? No, I think he's coming in here to compete to be the the left the left tackle. You know, so that's what it's open, man. It's uh, it's competition, and I don't think he's. To, I, I think he's going to be competing and, and understanding it, and that's the beauty is you come on in here and he understands our situation. We understand his situation. Let's go. Matt, what are you putting about? these three days together against the Dolphins, we didn't get a chance to talk to you after that practice the other day, but did, yeah. did you feel like Justin got better like in each three of the days? Yeah. Kind of about the second part to it. Considering today was live and he could finally be hit, how did you feel like he handled the speed of the game? Yeah, he, he, it, that's a really good question, Adam. He got – our whole – we weren't very good on Wednesday. Forget just Justin. Our offense, we weren't – no, let me rewind. We were, we were pretty good for most of the day until two minutes. We came back on Thursday, and I thought we were – I thought our guys stepped up, and they did what we wanted them to do. I love that. I love that they competed. They fought. Um, and Justin, you know, he, he grew too, and he had a pretty good day on Thursday. He had a pretty good day. So – and you take that now and you say, well, he can't be hit. There's a few times in there where we let the whistle go so that they can finish the play. He can't get hit. And we were joking, you know, I was joking, one of the linebackers, do you think you had him? And he's like, yeah. And Justin's like, no, you didn't. Yeah. But when we get out there in the game right now live, you see what happens when he gets outside of that pocket. You see? So um, it's a stressor. It's a stressor to those defenses. And if they want to drop eight, if they want to play 22, it just – you know, it's uh, and that goes into the part where I think you where we felt a calmness from him when when he's outside the pocket. You saw he wasn't just going outside the pocket to run for 80 yards. He was smooth with what he was doing with, with the wide receivers on. Do I want to throw it or do you want to lead block for me? And then when he turned it on and scored that touchdown and lowered the shoulder, you know, um, it was pretty good. And and so I think that that's uh, one of his strengths. So building building on that, man, is there anything Justin can do? Just worry about tomorrow, baby. You know, seriously. You know, I, I, that's all I want him to do, and make it make it really hard on all of us to understand that we have a really good quarterback right now in Justin Fields. We have a really good quarterback in Andy Dalton, and a really good quarterback in Nick Foles. That's all I want them to do. Just wor seriously, just worry about tomorrow, and keep worrying, and uh, and and just create great competition and be the best quarterback you can be for the Bears. What do you tell the open man when you see him trying to leapfrog a DB in the open field? Yeah, I know. We were joking about it on the sideline. Um, you know, maybe – I mean, he probably can do it, but right now just just probably put the shoulder down and run through him. You know, just be be smart. But, I, I you know, he's he likes it. He's, he thinks he's an athlete, so we just got to – <laughs> he does. Touchdown last one. He's got the pressure coming from the left side. Yeah. He goes into that instead mm -hmm. of running away from it. What does that tell you about his presence of mind as far as seeing where he could go within that instead of panicking and just taking him off the other way? Well, yeah, that was a little bit of the, of the, the calmness that he had. Um, and I think that you don't feel the panic, you know, if you go the other way. Like, there's just – he's calm in the pocket. And p part of that's because he trusts his speed. He knows that, you know, he's pretty fast out there. So, if there is a, a guy that's going to come and try to make a play here or there, he, he understands that outside the edge, if there's a guy coming to 45, he can outrun him. But overall, I thought the pocket presence was good. And again, to the credit to the offensive line, they provided pres they, they provided a pocket for him to be able to see downfield. He had that nice deep cross that we dropped. I thought that was a good play action play that he had. Um, we had some backed up situation there his last series. Uh, generally, in all, I, I'd say for a, a you know for for Justin to have the second team reps, he got a lot of valuable experience situationally. And for the first preseason game. To have as much as we had in that first, you know, situation, that's awesome tape work for us. And so I'm just proud of all the guys and looking forward to uh, this week. Thanks, guys. Okay? Thank you.